welcome to the nonprofit show. We are so glad you're here. And also I want to say welcome to Nashville because we are live with the One Cause Raise Conference in Nashville. Really excited to be here today. We are here for two days. So today is day one and we will also be live broadcasting the nonprofit show tomorrow for day two. So thrilled to have you with us. As we move forward in today's conversation, I want to say thank you to Julia Patrick for creating the nonprofit show. So glad to be alongside with you. And thank you for, you know, the opportunity to take the show live. This was always a dream of ours and really excited to be doing it. I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd and CEO of the Raven Group. So I actually gave away a lot of nerd glasses this morning. I spoke this morning and they were hot commodities. We also want to say thank you to our amazing sponsors that allow us these opportunities coming up on our 900th episode. So gratitude goes out to our friends at Bloomerang that are also here at the conference. Thank you to American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at National University, also has a representative here at the One Cause Conference. Thank you to Nonprofit Thought Leader, your part-time controller, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, as well as Nonprofit Tech Talk. These are the companies that have been with us from the very beginning and helped us to produce such a plethora of information. So if you haven't checked these companies out, do yourself a favor and check them out because they are here to help you elevate your mission. If you missed any of our previous episodes, or you like what you're hearing today and you want to listen to it again, we've got you covered. You can find us on many streaming platforms. You can download the app. So if you're watching right now, you can actually actually scan that QR code. You can also find us on broadcast and podcast platforms. So again, really excited to be here live at the One Cause Conference. I'm going to invite up with me, Emily Newberry is here with me. Hi. Welcome. Hi, it's so nice to be here. Thanks for having me. I am thrilled you're here. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Emily, for those viewers and listeners that might be watching and listening, but say, I don't think I've met Emily yet. So tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about the conference. Awesome. Well, I'm a previous fundraiser. So I started my career in fundraising and then landed at One Cause uh, 12 years ago. So I've been with the organization for a long time in many different roles, but my current one is um, vice president of national accounts. So I get to work with a lot of national organizations and really make sure that there is alignment between their fundraising strategy and what we're trying to do with our SaaS products. Oh, that sounds like a lot of fun. So this conference, this is not the first year. So tell us about a little bit about the history of the of the race conference. Yeah, so we started, this is its seventh year and it has grown exponentially. It's actually wild to see all of these people here. It's just grown so much. It started as a 125 person conference in Washington, DC in 2017. And every year has grown so much. And I think that's because the reputation that we have in our space just as thought leaders in general, and just the amazing experience people have here and the, I think the motivation they leave with after being at our sessions here. Well, the energy is vibrant. It's a lot of fun. And how many attendees are here with us today? There are just under 600 people here with us today. So when I say it grows, it grows every single year. I mean, seven years ago, eight years ago, this was a this was an idea. Our marketing team has grown this into something so wild and so fantastic. And so, yeah, we're at 500 and over 550 attendees today. Yeah. That is fantastic. There's a lot of innovation. I feel like there's a lot of innovation in our sector, but we're seeing it here at the conference. So what are you seeing by way of innovation from our speakers, from our vendors, from your sponsors? What are you seeing out here? Yeah, well, I think that starts with the nonprofits, the fundraisers, because they lean into technology now. They lean into innovation. And I think that we don't give... I mean, I, I still think of myself as a fundraiser, even though I've been out of that direct space, but I am. And I think that we don't give ourselves enough credit. And we actually are leading into that. And we are expecting more of the people around us in the space. And so those vendors and those software providers and just the people in the industry are starting to bring it to meet the needs of fundraisers. And then by an extension of that, the donors. So it's really interesting to see. I love that you still consider yourself a fundraiser. I Yes, I think once a fundraiser, always a fundraiser, really looking at it from a space of how can we be of service to our community? There is a lot going on. And I remember, and you guys are always there at AFP Icon. And I feel like that was the first time, Emily, a couple of years ago that I really realized how technology focused our sector has become. Can you speak to, to any point really of how technology has played and 
impactful role in our sector. Yeah. I think, I mean, it was always like that. Right. But I, I had the same experience about that two, three, four years yeah. ago. And I think that that's a post COVID thing too. It's that we started to expect of our nonprofit experience the same way we do of our normal consumer experiences. Right. So you think about the big companies that are serving up these experiences, the way we bring that to nonprofit should be no different. And I, so that's really what we're seeing is we're seeing like, say, Hey, we understand what technology is. We understand that our donors know how to use it. And so the expectation is there, the bar has been risen. And so now all of us are trying to meet that, but we're seeing that in the different tools that we use um, in, in making sure that organizations are efficient in some of their like everyday administrative tasks. We're seeing that in obviously fundraising software and some of the things that one cause is bringing to the table, but we're see, I mean, just, AI, AI is a huge topic here at Raise, let me tell you. So we are starting to see all of that in so many different ways, but it's because the fun, the donor um, expectation has risen so much. And I think that's a COVID thing because we all had to use technology very differently during COVID. Yeah, I agree. It, it's really up-leveled how we serve and how how we can be smarter in the tools and technology that we have. I love that you mentioned AI. Yesterday, I had the great pleasure of meeting with Sean Olds from Boodle AI. He will actually be on the show tomorrow. So excited to have him on tomorrow to talk about, yeah, he does have great stuff. Hear him talk about what's going on in the generative AI space. But there is so much really happening I would love it because I, I know this conference is going to continue, but what are we looking forward to as we celebrate, you know, this year's success? What can we start looking for next year? Because Emily, my thought is there's viewers and listeners that aren't part of the 550 yeah. Yeah. people yeah. here and we'd love to have them next year. Yeah. Well, one, we need to get you here because it's sad <laughs> that you're not here. You should all be here. Um, I think what you can expect is another awesome venue and another awesome city, first and foremost, because I will say, well, the content at Raise is really great. It is fun. Yes. Uh, it is just a fun and very um, like relaxed and a very easy way to engage with people. And I will say that we are going to lean into this idea of community. So we have a lot of sessions and there's a lot of great content that you'll walk away from, but we really do focus on making sure that we give people time and space to engage with one another, to have downtime, to have really real conversations and to you know build that community of fundraisers that we all want, so. You know, fun. you mentioned fun and I just have to show, yeah. help me grab some of these okay. here because there's some fun labels, just show them to the camera. There's some fun you know, labels. We got boots. Coat, Emily. <laughs> We've got well, first time attendee. So a lot of those actually. And so maybe one of you will be a first time attendee. Actually, I'm a first time attendee. <laughs> Can you believe that? That's why. I know. Okay. So I, know, I need to put it on. I need to slacking. <laughs> okay. Oh, repeat attendee. Now we're the fun ones. Here we go. Hot, hot chicken and honky tonk. We got live, 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 land dance. I don't know, something. Yeah. But a lot of fun. Like we really do foster a really fun environment here. And I think that more than anything is what you yeah. will expect. Yeah. Well, Emily, thank you. It's been fantastic and uh, excited to be here. I'll share too thank this you. morning. Yeah. This morning, speaking of this live, laugh and line dance, we started this morning yes. with line dancing yes. because tonight there's a party and I have a sneaky suspicion line dancing is part of it. Yep. Bring your boots. <laughs> Emily, thank you. It's been so great. Yeah. Well, Emily Newberry with One Cause, so excited to have her join us today. I mentioned we have three amazing individuals joining me. So I want to invite up with me today. We have Barbara O'Reilly. So welcome. It's great to be here. Yeah, excited to have you with us. Tell us a little bit about yourself because we had the opportunity to meet last night in person, or as Julia Patrick, my co-host, likes to say, IRL, but you are with Windmill Hill Consulting. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, that's the uh, consultancy that I founded 14 years ago. We're about the same time frame because I started my company also 14 years ago. And you're, tell me what part of the country you're in and a little bit about the work you do in our sector. Uh, so I'm based in the DC metro area. I live in Northern Virginia. Uh, and I founded the company 14 years ago, having been a career fundraiser uh, in-house in large organizations. And I decided that I wanted when my daughter was born to uh, become a consultant. Um, I, in truth, 
when I was younger as a baby fundraiser, I always thought in the back of my mind, I'd want to be a consultant at some point. And so I decided that that was the moment to be able to, to go out and launch my own firm. Uh, and I've had the great honor, not only to work in-house with incredible organizations, but to partner alongside so many um, valuable nonprofits who are doing impactful work around the country, in our communities, and around the world. I love that origin story. And I just have to share uh, at the conference, and I'm sure you know her, Mallory Erickson is also here, very pregnant and very impactful. And so just had her on the main stage sharing. So loving that you're doing this, you you saw the vision of this uh, for, for your life and for your family. What are you seeing here at the conference? I know, or I feel like it's still early this morning, but there's still a lot going on. So what are you seeing that's really, you know, showing up big for you here? Well, first of all, this is one of the conferences that I love to come to. It's it's absolutely on my priority list every year. I love attending. I love presenting. Uh, and what I'm seeing is certainly the, the sessions that we'll be, uh, we're leading, I'm monitoring a panel this afternoon, uh, where we're going to talk about old school, new school fundraising. Uh, and, you know, what are we seeing in terms of how we balance what we call relationship fundraising with all of this new digital landscape that we're living in. And I think that there's um, pros and cons to both sides and how we can integrate. And there's a lot of fear, frankly, from a lot of nonprofits, a lot of um, stretched bandwidths who think it's not possible and we're going to be in one or the other, more likely the one. So I, so we're really going to break down those myths uh, and, and tackle this head on. Um, I'm also seeing a lot of um, data that's being brought into this. I know you're an, uh, a nonprofit nerd and I love data as well. And I'm always thinking about what can we learn from studies, from the research, from the trends that are happening sector-wide uh, so that we can bring them, bring the things that are actionable for our nonprofits to our organizations to become um, scalable and sustainable over time. There's so much in what you just said, <laughs> right? And really looking at the new dare I say old, right? Like really looking at what that looks like. So you're right. You're moderating a panel and I believe Sean Olds is on that panel and some other amazing guests, but tell us a little bit about what's going to be talked there. I know you, you touched on it, right? And then you're speaking in another session too, or maybe you already did that, but Tell me a little bit about both of those if you can, because again, our viewers and listeners across the globe, our goal here, right, is to bring it to you. We can't bring all of it, but give us a little, you know, snapshot further if you can into these sessions. Yeah, of course. So at 1.30, I'm going to be um, presenting four ways to rock your year in fundraising. Uh, that's a fun title. Thank you. So it's, you know, because we this is the place to do it, right? There's fun. Uh, Emily was just talking about how much fun they bring into this conference. So that's one that I'm really excited to present about. Uh, you know, here we are in mid-September and nonprofits hopefully have got their year-end plans in place, but hopefully, right? <laughs> that's, a, that's a big hopefully. <laughs> it's not too late if you don't, so yeah. no shaming at all. But, you know, right now we have to be thinking about you know, 30% of all uh, contributions are made in the month of December. Uh, and so how do we prepare in the 11 months leading up to it so that we don't feel like we're overstretching and working hard, even harder than we already do, but how do we work more um, strategically and effectively for those for those bigger and better results. So that's what we cover at 1.30. Then at four o'clock, I'm gonna be moderating this panel of incredible thought leaders who, and we're gonna really dig into um, what does it mean for to be old school, right? And I grew up, I started, right, pre-internet, is a baby fundraiser doing all of the old school things, of uh, in-person, phone, print. Uh, and so we're gonna break down what that means to be old school, relationship-based, what does it mean for digital fundraising, the new school? Uh, and we're going to cover topics like AI and, and what does AI actually mean? A lot of people think only um, chat GPT or GPT-4, but it's a lot of other things like generative AI. I'm going to be tapping uh, Sean on that and what, what he's up to at Boodle. Um, there are, uh, you know, we're already using AI in so many things now, predictive modeling. We do that. Our firm does that now with our clients where we can offer more strategic nuanced segmentation than just um, and again, not slamming the, the last year, but not yet this year kind of donor um, segments. So we're going to touch upon that. We're going to talk about what what is working and not working. Um, what are some 
things that we need to really speak against. So, you know, oh, it, there's always that myth about direct mail is dead, or right. I don't have time to meet with my donors or to pick up the phone. How, how can we change that model? How can we flip that script so that nonprofits and fundraisers see the value of building their donor relationships, adding to them the digital communication channels? Again, like there's so much happening here. And those are just two sessions, right? And really looking into this. Barbara, thank you. I want to, I'm going to put you on the spot, right? And, and today we're really just doing little 10 minute teaser sections, but I'd love to get you on for a full episode of the nonprofit show. Oh, wait, 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 say that for the mic. I would love that, Jared. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me. It's been a pleasure, you know, really looking at all of the thought leaders here with us today. And I just, I can't wait to have more conversations with them because that was just scratching the surface with Barbara Windmill Hill Consulting out of DC, uh, but really talking about, you know, the new ways, the old ways, there's so many opportunities. So my next final guest for this morning, I'm excited to bring up with me today, she is back by popular demand. Hi, LaShonda. Hi, Jared. It's so fabulous to be here. So LaShonda, as you know, is with Fundraising Academy, LaShonda Williams. Uh, Fundraising Academy at National University has been a wonderful supporter of the nonprofit show. Tell us what you're doing here at the conference, LaShonda. So very excited to be here, to be on part of the panel with Barbara. So we'll be talking about old school versus new school and ways to integrate technology in a way that's meaningful and creating some dynamic donor experiences. But in addition to that, joining my good friend here today, Jarrett, so we can talk a little bit about Nonprofit Show, as well as the Fundraising Academy and some of the fantastic programming that we offer, and possibly tease you all about some upcoming things to look forward to with the Fundraising Academy. Absolutely. Now, again, I'm going to put you on the spot. I shared that this is my, let's see, it's in here. Um, the first time attendee badge, which I do absolutely need to put on my lanyard that says I'm a first time attendee. Would you pick first time or repeat? I would pick first time and I will say that the first time is definitely leaving a phenomenally lasting impression. We got a wonderful start last night, had an opportunity to meet with some of our colleagues in this space and then also meeting some of the attendees and being an attendee today, I'm definitely amplified and excited about the program and it's here. We just, I just saw Jared's show session. She was on the main stage and when I tell you all, if you're not here, you have absolutely positively missed a treat on rents repeat and recycle tools that you can use social media guru that is you well thank you LaShonda she was a wonderful supporter there with me and you're right there's just a lot of information to take away but talk to us about the energy here because we really are getting I mean there's six floors yeah. right six floors so talk talk to our viewers and listeners a little bit about what you're seeing, the energy, the vendors, you know, from, from an attendee perspective. So from attendees perspective, first and foremost, this space is phenomenal. Being a part of country music history in the building, Dolly Parton, Garth Brooks, and all of the great I feel nothing but amplified. Everyone here is very excited. Each floor offers a variety of different training. The um, attendees here today are very excited. They're eager to learn more. Most importantly, it's a great space for us to create our own COPs beyond this space today. Um, industry professionals, everything from event experts to actually development directors, executives, all under one roof. Everyone is amplified. And earlier today in our opening session, we were asked to repeat a word and the word was love. And the energy was filled in the main hall with lots of love. You're so good at sharing what's going on. And you've joined me here for the nonprofit show live from several conferences now. We did AFP Icon together. We've done Cultivate Fundraising yes. Academy. Cannot wait to hear more about that in May. Because what I'm seeing here at the RAISE conference is Definitely attendees are back. I mean, you heard Emily Newberry say just shy of 600 people with us today, but are you seeing and feeling that the event attendees will continue to rise as we look for more opportunities to build? 
I think both donors as well as all of us in this philanthropic space are looking for that opportunity to engage in real time. We are definitely on the upward trajectory as it relates to in-person events. Everyone is also thinking of ways to continue to creatively engage those for a hybrid option, but we are definitely going to see a consistent increase in in-person events as everyone is excited to cultivate relationships, knowledge, and impact. Yeah, absolutely. There, it's so exciting to see because even at the hotel, LaShonda, there are so many people staying at the hotel, enjoying even that walk to the conference center, having that camaraderie, meeting for coffee, meeting for cocktails, uh, really using this opportunity to connect. And, and again, it's always exciting when we see each other IRL. And this is for so many industry leaders, you know, even here today, as I look at the room and we look around, there are so many industry leaders in our community representing who they are and what they do. What is the big thing you're looking to take away from this conference? Because you're at Fundraising Academy, but you also work for higher education. And so for me, I am here for two folds, you know, the double dip, that is me. <laughs> so here we have a variety of vendors that offer a plethora of services to help us become more effective in everything that we do as far as strategy, contacts, engaging donors, and then most importantly, maintaining a database that can help us with creating database decision-making, which we know proves to deliver results. And you mentioned that today during your session, the importance of taking the time to look at the analytics. So I'm looking to not only secure information about event planning and fundraising strategy, um, but most importantly, some of the dynamic tools that are available to us to help us connect more effectively and efficiently as we're developing meaningful donor relationships. So everything is under one roof, and this is definitely the one-stop shop tour. So if you missed it this year, you might want to go ahead and sign up for next year because we sold out and we will definitely be selling up and selling out again next year, I'm sure. You should get commission for this, LaShonda. <laughs> you're so good at that. And you're right. I mean, there's just, I, I can't repeat it enough. There's so much going on here. I saw you in my session taking plenty of notes. How does it feel as a participant at a conference? No, Because I said this, you know, in my presentation, you're here at an event, your emails are piling up, your phone calls and voicemails are probably piling up but you're getting so many great opportunities to take notes and hopefully implement when you get back. How does that feel? It feels surreal because yes, the, the anxiety is a little bit high with some of the emails and I'm checking my phone. I'm being very active on the app for the conference. So I'm taking pictures, I'm uploading photos. I'm multitasking at its finest, but most importantly, I'm taking the time to really just enjoy the moment. And that means allowing myself to show up and be able to be an active participant in all aspects of everything that's happening today. And so I will say that this, um, the best way to describe the way I feel in this moment is immense gratitude. Gratitude to have the opportunity to engage with other fundraising professionals, experts in the industry who are equally excited and amplified about making a difference for their cause. So overall, I would say in this moment, again, amplified gratitude. Gratitude is a good one, you know, and as I stand here and realize there's a lot of individuals that have also used this conference as an opportunity to get away with their family and their loved ones. And so ourselves included, yes. we have loved ones with us, not here in studio, but they're here. And I've heard from so many other event attendees, they've really used the, the prior weekend to bring their friends and family in. You got to get around Nashville a little bit. So what are some of the sights and scenes? Because as again, viewers and listeners, you're thinking about, I want to talk to my supervisor, or I want to build this into my budget to attend conferences going forward. But to how might we consider tailoring this to really see the local community and maybe even capitalize on bringing a loved one with us? You know, work-life balance is very, very important. And COVID taught us that, you know, everyone should have a part of their daily routine where they create that moment where they can just have oneness with themselves. But when we're talking about creating caring communities, it's important to foster that as well in the workplace. And we've managed to 
kind of curate that in our own special ways. And it's really important. And so while I was here, you know, I got off the air, airline and I hit the ground running. I brought my mom with me. I'm super excited to share Nashville with her. We had a chance to tour this particular area. We went, we went down to, was it 6th Street where all the action happens? And we were able to see everyone in rare form on Broadway. <laughs> yes. I love that you said rare form. <laughs> on Broadway I had a chance to get a little culture in attended the African American country African American Museum of Music yesterday had a gospel choir concert and LaShawn I'm going to interrupt you you also became a member yesterday I literally purchased a dual membership yesterday and we often talk about ways to not only cultivate but also to engage donors well that was a phenomenal cultivation tool I was at Hattie B's and I heard the music and I was like, it drew me into the space literally because they had the sound amplified. Um, in addition to that, we also walked around the area, just seeing some of the wonderful sites, went by one of the museums and saw that um, one of the performance halls, the symphony, Common is coming to Nashville in October. So I'm really trying to figure out a way to make that happen. Can we get a, con <laughs> can we get a conference in October? An another conference here. <laughs> we need another conference here. So work-life work balance is really important. We work very hard as fundraising professionals, but most importantly, we care a lot and we must love equally as harder as we shared this morning with the first word being love. And so with that, I'm loving everything about today's conference. Tomorrow is going to be even more spectacular if that is such a thing. Line dancing tonight and then getting up in the morning, work hard, play hard, but most importantly, we're doing it on behalf of our organizations, making sure that we kind of re-up and get ready and we finish strong this final quarter because end of the year is coming. So this is the time for us to capitalize off of all things to amplify and raise the bar as we are garnering philanthropic support for our organizations. You know, sometimes when I have LaShonda on, I just want to like give her the microphone because she could take over the entire conversation. Um, I love that you mentioned like re-energize. We are coming up on Q4. And so what, what we're learning here is really big. And this is day one. So day two tomorrow, uh, you know, we'll we'll wrap up the conference, but we'll be live again uh, here at the nonprofit show. So LaShonda, thank you. I'm going to ask you to stay with me as I wrap up the show. You know how this goes, but it's really, it's been a lot of fun. We've got some really good stuff happening with us today. So again, if you missed any of our conversation today, um, I had Emily Newberry with One Cause, Barbara O'Reilly with Windmill Hill Consulting, and she's part of the, um, the conversation you're having, right? Very excited to share a conversation with Barbara. She will definitely be leading the charge as we talk about old school, new school, one of the many sessions as we close out today, and we will close out today strong literally with lots of great tips as we're incorporating AI into our uh, fundraising strategies, making sure that we're segmenting properly. That's really important. And then of course, LaShonda Williams. So three powerhouses starting off today in, in Nashville. Again, if you missed any of today's conversation, you want to go back and listen, you can find us on the app. You can find us on streaming uh, broadcast as well as podcast platforms. I want to thank Ray's for having us here. You know, this is their first broadcast studio. There's other podcasters that will be here on this same stage, actually using this. It's a beautiful setting that they've set up for us. So thank you to One Cause for allowing this opportunity to join us. Thank you to Julia Patrick. We miss her. Would love to see her here. <laughs> That's right. And of course, I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd and CEO of the Raven Group. We always want to give more gratitude to our partners because without them, we wouldn't be able to be here. So thank you again to Bloomerang. In fact, did you see Josh Myers? Yes. He just snapped a photo of us. So Bloomerang is here. Thank you to American Nonprofit Academy. Thank you to Fundraising Academy at National University. Again, just really happy to have LaShonda as one of the trainers joining me here. Also, thank you to Nonprofit Thought Leader, your part-time controller, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. These are the companies that have been with us from day one, coming up on, you know the number, almost 900 episodes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 900 for the nonprofit show. So again, Thank you so very much. And, you know, as we end every episode, it is so important. But as I have LaShonda with me and all of you watching and listening, 
hopefully joining us tomorrow as well. We invite you, we encourage you to please stay well so you can do well. Thanks everyone.